Let me show you how we can randomize all kinds of aspects about our Sinti characters. Here is a little example. I believe I've promised that a few weeks ago and then never got around to doing the video. So thank you so much, Ash, for reminding me of that. These are a bunch of Sinti characters. This one here is my player character and all the others. As soon as I move them, they go and randomize. So are they wearing a hat? What type of hairstyle are they using? What character and what skin color are they using? So I'm going to show you how to do all that. We're going to set this all up from scratch. Just a quick little preview here on how the, what this looks like. I'm doing this in the construction script. I'm using a sequence to keep it a little bit organized and then I'm going to go and do this with an array of these items and we're going to learn how to do all that. So let's get started. I've got my third person project here and I can walk around with the Sinti character. I've shown you in a previous episode how to do that and also how to attach the hair with the socket. And so we're going to expand on this concept by opening up our blueprint of the third person character. Just to refresh our memory, this is how I did that. So there was the Sinti mesh is being parented to the Quinn mesh and we have a hair mesh that in the construction script gets attached to the Sinti character. So we're going to expand on that and grab the static mesh component out of here and intercept that and put another one in. And we do that with an array. So I might just to tidy this up a little bit, I'm going to go and do this with a sequence that if you're not familiar with that, it's just something that lets us tidy up the appearance of our graph. So in here, we're going to do this essentially. So hair mesh comes out and we're going to set the static mesh on here, set static mesh. That's what we need. And that will go into our graph here. From here to there put a reroot node here and then Sinti mesh, yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna be here. So it still does the same thing, but here we can now essentially add a new mesh in it if we want. And we don't wanna just pick it, even though we could, so I could go and pick a hair from here. We want a variable to make that change. So the easiest way to do that then is create ourselves a variable down here. And we're gonna call this one hair styles. And it's not going to be Boolean. It needs to be a type that can go into here. And there's an easy way to figure out what type you need here. When you click on this, there, it can be quite overwhelming and intimidating of what type you actually need to put in here. Uh, if you hover over here, it tells you that this input needs a static mesh object reference. So that is something I wish I had known when I started with Unreal Engine, that this is a way to find out. So let's go and switch Boolean, which is the default type, I guess, into static mesh and then there's if you type that there's a ton of other bits and pieces here so head over to static mesh down here and we have static mesh object reference that is that that's the variable and if i hit compile i can give it a default value over here once again i can pick a hairstyle from here but that's just a single one and i want multiple to be in a pot that i'm going to draw one from randomly so to do that, we're going to change our variable type from a single static mesh object reference type to an array. And that is, if you're not familiar with programming, that's a group of the same type of variable. So instead of having one hairstyle, we now have like 12 or 15 or five or whatever. Set and map, those are other type of variables, but array is fantastic for us. So now I need to recompile, and then I can see that I could give it multiple elements. I can either set those manually, like every time I press this little plus icon, this is now hairstyle number one, this is now hairstyle number two, but you know, I have to drag them in there uh, manually and that'd be like way too cumbersome. So I'm going to go and hit that little trash can icon to delete everything and instead head over to my content browser and find everything that is a hairstyle. So let's go into, I'm using the Polygon nightclubs pack in meshes. There is, I believe, characters and in characters we have attachments and this is everything that can be attached. So you can do the same for beards and glasses and earrings and all kinds of stuff. So it looks like these here, from here to there, those are all the hairstyles. We have a couple of hats that we can also use to randomize. So I'm going to go and left click and drag the multiple items that I want to use for this into here. Drop it and boom, there we go. Now we have a list of hairstyles here. Fantastic. So nine in total, that's good to know. I don't have to worry because Unreal Engine will take care 
of the rest. So now I can go and grab my variable out here, which is now get hairstyles. And if I drag out of this, then I can go and pick a random item from the array here. That's the first one. That'll just have a look at how many are there, generate a random number between zero and the last element in the array, and then gives me one randomly whenever the construction script runs. So that is whenever the character is changed, and that's perfect. That will now set a random hairstyle. That's awesome. Let's see if it works. Compile, doesn't give any errors, that's good. Let's go wander around and boom, perfect. Now we're, now we're blonde. We don't have to do that. We can literally go into the viewport and every time we hit compile, that change is going to be visible to us. So that's that's an easy way to just preview, is this thing working? So all types of hairstyles are working. A little trick, if you fancy one hairstyle more than others and you wish they would come up more often, like we have a lot of blonde options, but say you had a particular preference for the dark hair, then you can go into your hairstyles here and just add another element to the array and then just duplicate the dark one or you know remove some of the blonde ones. That's a possibility. So that's the hair randomized. Let me just go and put a comment around this. And let's see if we can randomize some other bits and pieces about the character. So one thing I thought was quite nice is that we have these hats if I go to my skeletal mesh here, I've put one on here. That's basically another preview mesh on the same socket. If I go into the skeleton here and then go and over the skeleton, I've got a couple of sockets here. So one's for the regular hair and another one is for the hat. We only have two hats here, but the other packs might have more. So I thought I'm going to add that as well. And we can see how the principle works that some people might want to wear a hat, but others might not. So let's go and do that. And the first thing I need to do here is duplicate something that is in my viewport already. So we have a hair mesh already, but I can go and duplicate that. And this is now going to be my hat mesh. And I'm going to go and give it one of the hats. So it's duplicated the same hair now. So I'm going to go and say what maybe the red hat. There's four hats in total here. Two are meant to be props that you see lying around, but two are actual attachments that'll work. So the first thing that we need to do is put a similar mechanism in place that we've had for the hair. So I can just go and duplicate these nodes here with the Sinti mesh copy and then paste that down here. And this is going to be on the second pin. So let's go and pop that in here. Drag these guys down. It's like a mini game, this, isn't it? In, inside Unreal Engine, this whole node graph thing <laughs> makes it very enjoyable, very hypnotic. That. <laughs> so in here, we're going to go and grab our hat mesh. And that is going to be the target. The parent is still the Sinti mesh. And from here, we can go and make ourselves another array that'll present us with the static mesh of the hat. In fact, this needs to also go into here, into this target. It's the same uh, principle as the, as the hair. We need another variable, and this one's going to be hat styles. And this is probably, just to check, the same thing as before, so static mesh object reference. So that's already been remembered here, that is one. So as soon as I hit compile, I can give it some default values. And in here, I'm going to go and grab the beanie, that is a hat, and then also this red hat here. And you go and left click and drag those over into your arrays, and now we have two to choose from. So once again, hat styles comes out, and we go get hat styles random item in the array goes into here and that should now pick us a different hat every time we hit compile let's see if it works yes okay so our figure is wearing the hat but the thing is it'll wear the hat no matter what it picks because there's only two elements in the array it'll pick either one or the other it never picks no hats and we might want that and we might want that more than actually just having hats all the time. So the way to do that is to add empty elements to our array. So in my case, I have two hats and I'm going to go and add literally maybe two or three empty elements to this. So now it picks, sometimes it picks no mesh. And that means now if I go back to my viewport and I compile, sometimes I get a character with no hat, which is kind of nice. The variety is the spice of life. Okay, let's see what else we can randomize about our characters because the Sinti guys, they give us so much stuff that isn't just the attachments, that is also 
various other characters. And in the characters menu here, so under the pack, under meshes, under characters, you're going to find um, in this pack a mixture of blueprints as well as skeletal meshes. So those are slightly different. Uh, that's also retargeters here. So let's not worry about that and just pick out the skeletal meshes and then swap those out, much like we do it for the hair and the hat. So I'll keep that in the construction script. You can also refactor that into functions and then call that from other parts of your code. Stay organized, C, so random hat. So now we need to grab our Sinti mesh and we really want to set the skeletal mesh on this item here. So just remember in the Sinti mesh, we have this skeletal mesh asset and that is what we want to randomize. So we're going to have to set this in here. So this just, I know this is a bit confusing, but this thing here is actually a skeletal mesh component. So it's something that's attached to our blueprint. And on this component, it is that we can set a skeletal mesh. It's one of those things that's a bit tricky to understand when you get started with Unreal Engine. But so in here, we can go and say set skeletal mesh that is now something else that we did before. So the, before we had a static mesh, now it's a skeletal mesh. So different rules apply. Connect that and add another pin to our sequence node here. Pop that into here. And much like before, we're going to set this with a random item from the array that we're going to create now. So add another one and call that Sinti characters perhaps. And this, you've got to be a bit careful, hover over this and it tells you it's a skeletal mesh object reference. So that is what the variable type needs to be. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So if I go and take a random item out of here, even though it is a completely empty array, this isn't going to work because a static mesh object reference is not compatible with the skeletal mesh object reference. So we need to change a variable type for that. And that's over here. Let's look for it. Skeletal mesh. Here it is, object reference. There's several others here, the skeletal mesh actor, component, lot settings and all that. We need this one here, object reference. And then hit compile. It is already in array, so that's perfect. And we can do the same thing that we did before. We're gonna pick the only the skeletal meshes this time. So because there's other things in this folder, you can go and use this filter option here and only filter for skeletal meshes. So everything else will disappear. And now you know these are all the things that you wanna drag into the array. Unreal Engine 5.2 actually has a super tiny, extremely small label at the bottom that tells you what these things are. But if you don't use 5.2 or the label is really too small, to read you can just hover over these and it tells you in brackets there after the name what that is so in my case it's a skeletal mesh so left click and drag all these guys over here it takes a second now we have eight random characters to choose from so that's perfect much like before drag the array out get a random item in the array and pop that into here and that is our random character set up. Let's go and make a comment here. Random character. And head over to the viewport and see compile. There we go. Now we've got the security guard with a hat or without a hat or, you know, dancing lady and other guy with another hat and stuff like that dancing lady with a beanie and all that. So very cool. That's already a very good start. But the Sinti guys, they give you not just random characters and attachments. They also give you a variety of skin tones and outfit options. And they all appear in the materials section here. So nothing's showing because I've still got my filters selected. So let's go and reset my filters here. And in here I have alts, and those are essentially the alternative variations of all these skin textures. So the, all the characters and many of the props, they all use the same texture. And we have essentially mat 01 A, B and C. Then we have mat 2 A, B and C, mat 3 A, B and C, and mat 4 A, B and C. And you can stick with the A's or you can randomize all of them if you like. So let's go and make that happen. Back in the construction script, we need another P 
pin on our sequence node. And this is also going to come off the Sinti mesh. So we're going to drag a reference out to that. And here we want to do something similar to the set skeletal mesh asset. We want to go and set this thing here, the material here. So there's another node for that from the Sinti mesh set material, the first one here, not by name, just this one here. And that's going to give us, well, thanks. That's going to it was a second node here. We didn't need that. And that gives just going to give us an element index. And if ever you have objects with multiple material zones, then you can see that here. So you have element zero, one, two, three, and so forth, each of which could have a different material. So if you had an object that has multiple, you have to set multiple materials here. We only need one. So that's perfect. Let's go and grab that and put that into here. And once again, like before, we're going to go and set a material into this. So we need to create ourselves another array for that. This time with the type material interface object reference. So it's not just material. It's not a material instance. It's a material interface object reference. So let's go make that happen. I'm going to call it outfits, perhaps. Anything will do really. Let's search for material. It's not this one here, the material object reference. It's a material interface, interface object reference at the very bottom here. That's going to work. If I go and drag that out and go get, and then I grab a random item from the array, pop that into here, that'll work just fine. Perfect. So now all I need to do is, of course, populate that. So let's go compile. And with our outfits selected, let's go and grab either all of them. You can just put all of them in there. Just know that Unreal Engine has to do quite a bit of work to compile that. So if I go left click and drag, that might not appear there immediately. You just give it a little bit of time as it compiles shader. So if you don't wait that long, just, you know, pop a couple in and see if it works. It's a good indication to see if these icons are blurry, then Unreal Engine is still working on it. So let's wait a second. There we go. I had to try it one more time and then it worked. So it's, that's perfectly normal because there's a lot going on with materials. And that is basically all we needed to do there. Let's go and comment that. I'll call it random outfit. It's outfit and skin color. You can have a look at the exact changes each texture makes or each material makes, but this is going to work. Let's have a look here. If we go and randomize this now, compile. There we go. Now she wears a jacket. That's a different character. This is a different barmaid, different outfit, and you know, a different skin tone. This is really, really fun. So now the cool thing is if you either play with your character, it'll be a different guy every time. He wears a hat. Sometimes the hats don't quite fit, but that's you know, it's totally fine. So every time you play, it'll be a different character. But also if you want to use this as a crowd scene, let me go into my a third person character here and we just make a copy of this and duplicate it and call it like a BP random Sinti. And then in here, this is a new blueprint. Now I'm just going to go and take the camera component away. So I don't really need that because this is not supposed to be my player character, but it'll retain the whole functionality. So if I go and drag this guy in now or girl rather, and I go and well, turn them around. First of all, there we go. Every time I make a move, the character changes. So I can go and uh, make duplicates of this and then give them kind of, you know, dancing animations in a club or whatever. And then, then you're, then you're good to go. They're wearing the same outfit here. <laughs> There, now you have a completely randomized Sinti character, totally unpredictable as well. So if there's some outfits in there that you don't like, you can just go take them out. Or like, you know, say you don't like the red hat because it seems to be poking through, then you can go and take that out. You can even go and make checks that see if it's this outfit with that character. I don't really want for that to happen and randomize it again. You can also go and split that code out into your own functions and call it from other areas of the game. So that is also possible. Possible. If you wanted to have something where they go into a wardrobe and, you know, change their outfits or whatever, that is possible. 
and there we have it and also just like one small tip at the end if you find the shadows are just a bit too harsh that is that is the directional light that again that took me forever to find out we're on the directional light there's the source angle and the source soft angle and if you crank that up uh, to the source angle to five and even source soft angle to five then you get much softer much more natural shadows and that doesn't look so terrible there we go i hope you liked it i hope this was useful if you have any questions then do let me know have fun with your Sinti characters go randomize and make a good game or have fun bye bye